Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Steven and I am a future first year dental student. So the last video that I made, I discussed your GPA and the importance of working on your GPA and sort of gave some insights on how I have dealt with my GPA and, and where I started and where I ended up. And so I figured it'd be appropriate for me to follow up that video with my discussion of how I study. And as I said in that last video, which by the way, I can put that right here. I don't know if I can link it. I'm not sure how YouTube works uh, anymore, but here it is. If I can link it here, cool. If not, it'll be in the description. But in that video, I talk about the importance of building your habits as a student and basically letting that be your focus instead of worrying about the number that is your GPA. And I also talked about how I personally rediscovered what worked for me as a student in studying. And so today I wanted to give uh, a little bit of a discussion on that exact topic. What did I do to relearn what worked for me and what was basically the best method to get me results? So yes, in the last video, I sort of gave my school history and talked about how I started out at a different school my freshman year and then ended up transferring to the University of Tennessee where I finished out for three and a half years. But I wanna go ahead and skip to my junior year because I think this is where um, I really started to find my groove and find my rhythm in school. So the second semester of my junior year, I was taking my microbiologies and if you're a pre-dental student, you are aware of these courses, I think, at least for my school, there was an option between three different biology courses. I think it was like anatomy, histology, or microbiology, and you could pick one, and that was uh, fulfilled your prereq for that. So I chose microbiology, and you needed four hours. And my school had a lecture and a lab. And the, the lab, I remember walking in the first day, and our teacher basically sat us all down and told us that this was gonna be one of the hardest classes we would take in college. And I appreciated that my teacher was pretty, like, brutally honest. Um, because that's important and it was it was pretty evident that that those words set in pretty quickly because half the class ended up dropping and I remember calling my dad after that discussion with the teacher and telling him you know this class is gonna be crazy hard like I don't know if I can do it I don't know I don't know how I'm gonna end up doing and I remember he said just give it your best shot I'm sure you're gonna do fine and we'll see what happens. So it was for this class that I basically started to reteach myself how to learn and how to study. And that started with the location. I think location is one of the most important factors in effective studying and there's a reason for that. Everyone's different, so this isn't gonna to apply to everyone, but for me personally, I need quiet when I study. I've never really enjoyed studying in, in popu populated loud places or anything like that. I like sort of a, a solitude, a quiet, just a place where I can really focus and not have to have outside distractions. Some people are different. Some people enjoy things going on around them when they study. Maybe it gives them a more active mind. But for me, it, it has always been a quiet. And at the University of Tennessee, which is a massive state school, the library is like ridiculously popular for students. Everyone goes there. So the main library wasn't really for me. And sure, there are spaces there that work. There are tons of spaces in that library and some of them are very quiet. But it also just is sort of the atmosphere. I, I don't love it. I go there pretty often, but I, I don't love it. It's not my favorite. But junior year, I discovered a smaller library on campus that was dedicated to the law students. So yeah, sorry guys, uh, stealing the law library from you. <laughs> But I ended up really enjoying the law library and that's where I found myself studying for this microbiology class. And so it was a combination of the actual physical room and the place where I was studying and also sort of relearning the tactics that took me to success in this class. So location, very important. I always like to sit down in a quiet place. I usually don't listen to music. When I study, that's not an effective way for me. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Um, I would encourage you to try studying to music without lyrics. I think that's, some, that's something that I've done in the past. Like I'm a Game of Thrones fan, um, so sometimes I'll put the Game of Thrones soundtrack on, which actually is more distracting than it should be because I'll hear certain songs and it makes me start thinking about the show. But music without lyrics, I think is a good way to not have complete silence, but have something going on. Another thing that I like to do is I'll go on YouTube and type in like white noise and I'll just put on the white noise video. It's like 14 hours long or something crazy. And then I'll have that going in my headphones if there's like a little bit of talking in the library because that does happen and that's not 
super uncommon. But yeah, so I sit down, quiet place. I have my laptop out and then I'll have either a notebook or whatever it is that I'm studying from. And this workflow I'm hoping to change soon. I want to get an iPad to sort of take everything and go digital with my note taking and all that. So more to come on that. And by the way, quick interjection, this applies to anybody in college or even really high school. This isn't just a discussion for pre dense This is for anybody who's looking to find a more effective way to study. So yeah, with that, I should have said that at the beginning, but with that out of the way, this is sort of, uh, sort of my process. So something I did for uh, the microbiology class was I started creating my own study guides and we had three exams in that class. So what I would do is I would basically go through all of the notes that we had been presented in class, so PowerPoints, and then we had like a lab manual that had a bunch of notes in it and stuff. And then I had a notebook where I would write down just any information I thought was important from the class. And I would go in there and create a Word document that was color coded. So I would have a color for my headings, a color for my subheadings, information would be in a certain color. And then if something was different, like uh, a certain organism name or a biochemical test or an agar or something like that, I would basically have colors for all of these things. And this was a good way for me to re-familiarize myself with the information because in the process of transcribing the information from my notebook to Word, I was re-learning it in my mind just by typing it. And quickly back to the iPad, that's something that I've seen is a benefit, is you're able to physically rewrite your notes, but then you're also able to take images like diagrams and things and annotate them and put them in your notes and make everything look pretty. And these study guides ended up being super substantial. I mean, I think a couple, one of them was like 24 pages or something. And they include a lot of pictures and just basically everything that I would need to know. And this process took a lot of time but like I said, it was very effective in allowing me to reapproach this material and re-familiarize myself with this material. So then after creating these study guides, I would spend time with them. And this is something that like, okay, Ali Abdal, super famous, super um, well-known guy on YouTube who makes the similar videos. He's talked about the active recall method where basically the the crux of the idea is that the most effective way to learn is to pull information from your brain instead of putting information into your brain. And so the way that I like to apply this was to have someone like my girlfriend, for example, help me study by reading me something from my study guide, anything, something random, and asking me to explain it. So if it's a concept, what does this mean? How does this work? Or if it's an organism, what is it susceptible to? What is it not susceptible to? How does it stain? all these things. And basically she would ask me questions and I would attempt to the best of my ability to answer them. And I think that is truly the best way to study. If you can explain something, you can recreate it on a test. And so our exams in this course were all written, 100% physical loose leaf paper written out long answers. And so a lot of my ability was to be able to explain the concepts from the course. And this is something that that sort of active recall method really worked for me was the ability to recreate this information on the test. And honestly, I did. I spent a lot of time on this course and on other courses that were similar and, and, and difficult, but I didn't spend like my life on them. And the outcome of that microbiology course specifically was that I actually, I got an A and my teacher told me a while later that I was in the top 3% of his class that he had taught for four years, which shocked me, by the way. He said he rarely gave out A's, but I, I didn't know how rare it was. And I don't say that as like a brag. Uh, I guess it kind of is, but <laughs> mostly my point is this class taught me that I there were things that I could do to relearn what worked for me. And the method of creating a study guide and having to go back and actively recall this information and be able to explain it was the most effective thing I've ever done for studying. And so this method isn't the same for every class. If you're taking, for example, an organic chemistry class, the best way to succeed in organic, which everyone will, will tell you, and I know this is frustrating, but it's repetition. You have all of these mechanisms and all these reactions and you have to be able to see them. And the only way to see them is not to memorize them. It's to actually go through and just do problems 
continue to do problems to the point where you see these mechanisms and you start to see the patterns. So that's organic chemistry. Uh, I would say physics works similar to that. It's, it's all problems and the ability to see sort of the patterns in the way these things break down. But other courses might be a bit more memorization heavy. And I think a lot of basic anatomy court anatomy especially and then also basic biology courses are very memorization heavy and so memorization is one of those things where it's like there's not, not really a perfect way to do it but there are certain things that work for people and i think the making a study guide and then actively recalling the information is a good idea and i think it would work for that okay so conclusion let me go ahead and conclude because I'm just rambling on. The point of this video is to urge you to find what works for you. And I said that last time, but I really mean it. I had to find a physical space that worked for me. I had to find a method that really was the best way for me to break things down and relearn. And then I had to be able to explain things to myself and to whoever was helping me study. And as I always say, not everyone is like me. So this method may not work for you but try some things, try different study locations, try using different technology, like using your computer or just using handwritten notes. Just see what basically gets you to this end point of being able to explain the information. Like I've said, if you can explain it, you can recreate it on a test. And I think that is the crux of this discussion. And now it's time for you to go out and actually get off of YouTube and start studying. I know I've struggled with it before in the past, but go ahead, open up the book and challenge yourself to learn something new and to really master or some topics and in the long run you're gonna thank yourself because you have basically recreated your ability to study and you've figured out what is most effective for you as a student so I have a fun little quick way to end the video and that is to ask you guys a quick question what is the most difficult course you've taken in college doesn't have to be a prereq for dental school or med school it could be anything for me this this question was interesting but I'm gonna go with biochemistry I took a 400 level biochemistry course and it was awful. I really struggled with that class and it was super frustrating because it was one of those situations where I would basically feel amazing after every test and then I would get the grade back and be very disappointed and I never quite figured out why that was but frustrating nonetheless. So yeah, let me know what was the most difficult course you've taken in college and maybe if you haven't taken it yet and you just know that it's going to be the most difficult, i.e. organic or biochemistry, you can put that down too. So thanks as always guys for watching. Stay tuned. Go ahead and subscribe. There's a notification button where you can hit the bell and you'll get notifications every time I upload. And if you're liking the content, go ahead and hit that. But yeah, like the video if you enjoyed it and thank you guys again as always for watching. Have a great day and happy studying.